What's up guys? In this video we're looking at Sample Tank Custom Shop or Sample Tank 3, the free version, and we're going to look at sounds that come with it and how to set this up in Reaper. So you can get this free plugin from IK Multimedia. Just sign up for an account and your download links are there. Really simple to install. Just use the default options there. So let's go into Reaper and I've already set up a template. And if you guys want to save a lot of time, you can sign up for my newsletter and you can download this template. To use the template that I've set up, you can click on a track or an empty area of the track control panel, go to insert uh, track from template, find that file sample tank multi, and it will come up just like this. I've loaded 16 patches. I've done the audio and the MIDI routing. And in this video, we will look at how to set that up from scratch. But if you want to save a lot of time, you can just download that file and get started making music right away. All right, so this is Sample Tank 3. It is a multi-timbral virtual instrument, 16 MIDI channels. It can load 16 different sounds uh, in any combination you like. Then you can send it all out to different channels in Reaper. So I've got 16 MIDI channels, MIDI tracks, routing into this plugin, and then out of this plugin, stereo sends from channels 1 to 32 out to 16 audio tracks. I hope that makes sense, and we'll go through all this, how to set it up from scratch. Let's just go through the interface super quick. On the left side, we have a browser. You can add on to this with the custom shop store, um, but let's just look at some of the free included patches. There's acoustic drums, electronic drums, a couple different bass guitars, a few synth basses, acoustic guitar, a grand piano, a few electric pianos, one organ, four strings. There's only a violin patch, but it's actually pretty well done because there's all these key switches which enable different articulations. So if I find my uh, sample tank MIDI 11, that's this track that will control this patch. So that's just the default one, and I can choose a different articulation. If we click on this, we can see the different types, such as staccato. We can click on this one. Pretty cool. And so it makes a simple patch much more versatile uh, because there's all these different articulations. And not all of these are like that, but some of them do have key switches. And some of them are limited to a specific range, and you can see that in the little keyboard here. So this P bass only goes down to the low B, and only up to here. There's also a lot of other cool things you can do with this. So if I take this one, hard alpha bass, you can click on effects, and there's a variety of different effects that are available uh, for each patch. If we go to mix, we can see those in an effects chain similar to how we'd have it in Reaper. Mute, solo, volume control, panning, all that stuff. In the edit window, we have some ways that we can manipulate the samples in this, such as transposing, uh, changing the velocity range, doing resampling or not can really change the sound. Change this. So just doing that really opens up a world of possibilities for manipulating these sounds uh, that come with this free virtual instrument. Pretty cool. All right, so let's start over. Let's see how this template is created and what's involved. If you want to do this for yourself or you want to do this for any other multi timbral virtual instrument. So I'm just going to select my folder track and delete it. I think there's 33 or 34 tracks in this template. We're just going to start with right click, insert virtual instrument on a new track. I'm going to find sample tank from the browser. Double click on that. This window pops up. Build routing confirmation. Do you want to add the tracks? We're going to click yes. That'll save us a step. That adds in 16 audio tracks. So we have outputs 1 through 32. 
and it also set up our routing uh, here. So this is now a 32 channel track instead of the default stereo. And it's routed everything out. And then this track here, the selected one, is not going to the master track. It has to go through these tracks first. But this track is where we have the actual plugin. So if we want to make changes to the plugin, it's this effects chain here. If we want to add effects to any of the instruments that we're using in Sample Tank, it's going to be on these tracks, the ones labeled out, one, two, et cetera. Uh, the next thing we need to do is actually get our MIDI input into this. We could record just on this track, but it gets a little messy when we're recording 16 channels of MIDI onto one item. So to give us a lot more control, we're going to do it on 16 separate tracks. You don't have to use 16. You can just use however many number of patches you have loaded in here. If you're only doing a piano, you only need one track. You can do it all on just one track. MIDI in, audio out. If you're doing piano, bass, acoustic drums, you'll probably want three patches with three MIDI tracks, three audio tracks going out. So let's do this with 16 because there's a shortcut for that. Right click on the plugin name in the effects chain. We're going to build 16 channels of MIDI routing to this track. So now we have another 16 channels that are added into our TCP area. It's also in the mixer. Let's just color these track color to one random color. I select these ones. I have a shortcut B to do the same thing. So we've got our audio outs and we have our MIDI inputs to this track up here. You could set them all the same. You could set them to two similar colors, uh, but being able to differentiate the MIDI tracks from the audio tracks is going to be really helpful in the long term. We can also assign icons to these tracks to help us identify the patches that are in. Uh, so we just need to arm this track and we know that it's going to the piano because there's a piano icon on it. That sort of thing. It's optional, but uh, it can really help just to be quick with things. The other thing we need to do is to take all of those MIDI tracks that we created, this one to this one, and we're just going to click on this monitor enable button. So then we'll be able to hear when we're playing on the MIDI inputs. All right, so the sample tank track doesn't need to be record enabled anymore. We're not going to be recording on this track. We could actually set this up so it's just like a, an audition track. This track can access any of your MIDI inputs. And then depending on the channel that you're putting into it, so if I set my keyboard channel to input four by pressing the buttons on my keyboard. Now when I press a key, you see that number four lights up. I do the same thing for channel seven. Now I see that. So we could use this track just to get our initial recordings done and then drop, drag them down to the other tracks. Or we could just use this as an audition track. What I like to do is to right click this, set to record disable. So it's Input monitoring only, we're not going to accidentally record on this track. So next we're gonna set this up so that we don't have all the tracks in the mixer, and we don't have all the tracks in the track control panel. I'm gonna to go to view and track manager. We're going to take our MIDI tracks, and we don't wanna see our MIDI tracks in the mixer. So we're just gonna click on one of these that hides them. Then we're going to take all our audio outputs, and until we're doing automation, we don't need to see these in the track control panel. So I'm just gonna click on that and that hides them. Now we have 17 tracks in the track control panel area, our range view. And in the mixer, we have uh, channels one and then 18 to 33, which are our audio outs. So there's a couple more things we need to do inside of Sample Tank. The first is to just load patches. Really quickly, I'm not gonna do all 16, We'll do a few of them. So when we have our part highlighted here with this first number, you can double click and we'll load that patch. It's loading in the samples into RAM. Some of the patches take a long time. Some of them are really quick, um, but that's how you do it anyways. On number three, we'll do the EDM kit. All right, so we're going into audition these. We can audition them from here. 
whatever part is selected. You can use the mouse for that. But we can also go into the track control panel and then arm the tracks for recording, the ones that we want to play on. So there's a piano. There's our bass and part three. There's the EDM kit. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but patch three, we expect to be coming out of the third track here. It's still coming out of the first one. We have to go into the mixer and then assign the outputs. So one and two for grand piano is fine, but then the next one we want on three and four. Output three will go to five and six. Output four goes to seven and eight and so on. Once again, I've already done this in the template. If you wanted to save a few steps, you can do that. If you don't like the patches that I've selected, you can remove them entirely and just keep the routing that I've set up. That'll still save you a lot of time. Before we save our track template, I like to have everything put into a folder so it can be collapsed later on. So we're just going to put in one more track and bring that up to the top. Call this um, sample tank multi. Select all tracks, and then I'm using Command F, which will put them into a folder, and that actual shortcut is, nope, I have to press the right button. Set selected tracks as folder. So you select all your tracks, the top one will become the folder, all the selected tracks will become the child tracks in the folder. So that's it. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've learned something. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support on Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.